Hi, this is the Demok Tutor with yet another video on Star Wars Unlimited uh, limited play. Uh, normally I do videos on draft, but since pre-release weekend is coming up, many of the events that you'll be playing are sealed events. So uh, this is a primer on how to do well in sealed events. We're going to learn about the basics. We're going to learn about the differences between sealed and draft and a basic strategy for you to create a workable sealed deck. So let's get started. So what are the rules for the pre-release? Well, you're going to be given six booster packs. You're going to open all of them up and you will get a pool Normally, it would be six leaders. You would only get the leaders that you can uh, draw from the packs. However, because it's a pre-release, you will also have access to two of the promo leaders. In this case, it will be Moff Gideon and the Mandalorian. Uh, so from that pool of eight leaders and the 84 playables you get from the booster packs, you will create a 30-card deck using one leader and one base. Uh, you will be using common bases for the Shadows pre-release since there aren't rare bases, but uh, if there are rare bases, you are allowed to use those if you draw them from a booster pack. So how does Sealed differ from Draft in terms of the decks and in terms of the gameplay? Well, Sealed decks have greater individual card variants than draft. And what I mean by that, uh, I mean variance in their power. And that's because sealed decks have access to more rares and legendaries than draft decks. In draft, you typically will have three, maybe four, five at max rares or legendaries in your deck. Whereas sealed decks, you are guaranteed to have uh, six rares or legendaries at your disposal. And so uh, you have access to more powerful cards. However, the decks are less optimized, right? In draft, because you are picking from the same colors, you can generally do a little bit more optimization in terms of getting um, the, uh, the most playable uh, cards for, for those aspects. Whereas in sealed, all of the aspects are distributed evenly. So you don't have as much opportunity to, for example, um, get uh, cards that not only fit your aspects, but also have a good curve. And because of that, uh, the, because sealed decks aren't as optimized, sealed matches are generally slower. And uh, that is will also uh, translate to that raw card power is usually more important than synergy. Again, you don't have as much opportunity to optimize the synergies in your deck, so therefore usually the cards that have the most raw power uh, are going to win. Now that doesn't mean that you can't uh, create a really good sealed aggro deck, but it is harder to put together. So what will be our basic strategy for building our sealed deck? Well, the first step is organizing all of our cards. So we're going to open all of our packs, and we're or going to organize the cards into seven categories. We're going to have any cards with blue in one, uh, any cards with green, any cards with red, any cards with yellow. Then we're going to have a mono villainy pile, a mono heroism pile, and a colorless pile. We're then gonna further organize each color aspect pool into their three alignments. So we're gonna take all the blue cards and we're gonna sort them into blue villainy cards, blue heroism cards, and mono blue cards. And we're gonna do the same for green, red, and yellow. We're then gonna place each of our leaders next to their matching categories. So we're going to put, for example, Moff Gideon, uh, next to uh, the green uh, villainy pile, and we're going to put the Mandalorian next to the blue heroism pile. And we're going to do that for the other six leaders that you draw. We're then also going to note the best playables in each category, as well as which categories have the most cards overall. 
now that we have organized our cards, we're now ready to go to step two, which is building deck foundations. First, we're going to choose two aspects. First, we're going to select the aspect with the most cards that has a matching leader. Remember, we've organized our leaders. We put them next to their corresponding categories. We now want to pick uh, the category which has the most cards among the leaders. Second, we then select the remaining aspect which has the most cards. Now, most of the time, uh, these two aspects will be the basis of our deck. Now, if we think that the synergies really clash, uh, or one of the aspects doesn't have good enough playables, we can consider replacing one of those two uh, aspects with uh, one with the third most cards. All right. But most of the time, we're going to stick to our top two. Now, once we've decided on our two aspects, we will place all of the cards in those aspects, of course, minus the cards that are not aligned with our leader. Uh, we're going to throw in all of the close cards, as well as all the mono-aligned cards with our leader. So if we have a villainy leader, we throw in all of our mono-villainy cards. If we have a heroism leader, we throw in all of our mono-heroism cards into our deck. And this is going to be uh, our initial deck. So once we have our initial deck, we're ready to move on to step three, which is deck refinement. We're first going to count the number of cards in our deck. If our deck has more than 30 cards, we are going to cut the weakest cards until we get down to 30. We're then going to set aside the weakest cards that are still in our deck. Uh, so what do we categorize, what do you categorize as weak? Um, weak, compared, uh, weak cards compared to what they cost. Uh, cards that lack synergy in our deck. Maybe we have one too many events, one too many upgrades, etc. We're also going to set aside the best remaining playable uh, off-aspect cards in front. So remember those cards that we had identified in step one that we just end up not putting in our deck? We're going to pull those cards and we're going to put them in a pile uh, in front of us. Now, if our deck had less than 30 cards, we're going to start filling the deck with our best off aspect playables until we get to 30. Now, once our deck has 30 cards, we are then going to compare the best remaining off aspect playables with the weakest cards that are still in our deck. We need to ask ourselves, which off aspect playables are worth switching in for a weak on aspect card that's still in our deck? So questions that you want to consider when thinking about uh, whether putting in off aspect playable uh, versus the weaker in aspect card is you want to consider things like your deck's curve. Uh, is your curve going to be relatively balanced with the switch? Is the extra cost of that off aspect playable, is it worth the increase in the power level you'll get compared to the card that would be replaced? Uh, things like that. Okay. So once you have wrestled with all those questions, you should have a playable deck that's ready for the event. And hopefully it'll maximize the amount of wins and you'll be able to come out of there with as many of those beautiful new packs uh, that you get to open. So I just want to thank you for watching till the end. If you like what you saw, please like, subscribe, and comment. I am always looking for feedback and improving these videos. I plan on doing a follow-up once I have done a couple of new drafts for the new set. Uh, I'll give you my feedback on the gameplay, uh, other observations, maybe um, some new cards that uh, have surprised me in terms of performance. Uh, I'm looking forward to the new set, and I hope you are too. So again, thank you so much for watching. May the Force be with you, and I will catch you later. Peace out.